Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over two separate severe weather events that are going to be happening over a similar geographic area. The first one is going to be taking place over the southeastern United States for tomorrow into early to uh, early Monday and then the second one is going to be taking place uh, over the Tennessee Valley and parts of the southeast for Tuesday into Wednesday and even maybe lingering into Thursday. We have a bit of chillier air on the back end for one or two days, uh, then it should warm up again and we have a lot of humid and warm air out ahead of both of these severe weather events and that's what's going to be fueling uh, these two events. So let's get right into it here and let's start off with your current National Weather Service page. You can see that we have some red flag warnings in effect for parts of Montana, the Dakotas, and Minnesota, as well as four parts of Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. Another one for a little bit of Kansas and Colorado. One more uh, for western Colorado. Another patch for western Texas and uh, southern New Mexico. And then one final patch uh, for parts of Arizona and Nevada. So definitely a lot of fire weather danger over much of the United States for uh, today, especially over the northern and western United States in particular we have a few wind advisories scattered throughout parts of the western United States and along the Great Lakes uh, as well. We have some flood watches in effect also for southern Texas uh, there where uh, we do uh, we did see quite a bit of rainfall and we are going to be seeing uh, quite a bit of rainfall. Yesterday we had a high temperature in Ocotillo Wells, California where they got to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The low temperature was in Peter Sinks, Utah, where they got down to 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And the highest precipitation or rainfall report was in Lufkin, Texas, where they got 6.25 inches of rainfall. If you're wondering why we have those flood watches currently in effect, it's because we have a couple of batches of actually rather heavy uh, rainfall from about uh, southernmost Texas all the way up uh, to areas like Corpus Christi and Victoria, Texas, uh, right along the, so the southern and eastern uh, Gulf Coast of Texas and then also even back west of San Antonio we also have some batches of rather heavy uh, and steady rainfall uh, for those areas so we've been seeing rainfall amounts one to three inches reported uh, even a few amounts over three inches uh, in fact uh, the highest precipitation report yesterday was not far from this area of rainfall it was up in southeastern Texas uh, and they got 6.15 inches of rainfall I believe so uh, all these areas are dealing with quite a bit of rainfall not just just from what's happening right now but what was happening just a couple days ago uh, as well so that could cause some issues especially in terms of flooding uh, over some of these areas here is what the Storm Prediction Center shows for today, and you can see not a lot going on. We have a few general thunderstorm risks for the northern United States, and then we have a marginal risk for uh, southern and eastern Texas, as well as southwestern Louisiana, uh, but that's not the main event that we're talking about. Uh, this is your first uh, real severe weather event. And this is going to be taking place over parts of far eastern Texas, uh, much of Louisiana, much of Mississippi, and maybe a little bit of Alabama and Tennessee as well. That's where we have that slight risk in place. And then the second uh, severe weather event, which is going to be the more major one, uh, on the day three outlook, you can see a huge area of slight risk. Would not be surprised if we even add a little enhanced risk. And if they were to put in enhanced risk, I would assume it would be somewhere uh, in here because that does look like it's going to be the area with the most severe weather. And that's, again, just as of what we're seeing right now. This is de definitely bound to change, uh, especially severe weather. It can change very, very quickly. Uh, but for the most part, we have that slight risk, which goes from Kentucky and Ohio uh, all the way westward to Kansas and Oklahoma. And everywhere in between is shaded in with that yellow slight risk uh, for those areas. And then uh, the day four outlook does not show anything, but I wouldn't, I'm wouldn't. i definitely expecting at least a marginal risk for the southeastern United States uh, on tomorrow's outlook for these areas. I definitely think that's going to happen. They might even put up a tiny area of slight risk in the southeast for the day three outlook on tomorrow so we're going to continue to monitor this and give you updates on anything if that if anything does change so here is the first event and this is not going to be as major as we were first expecting uh it didn't look too major in the first place but it does look like now it's weakening uh, a model model run to model run so uh we're not expecting too much out of this just maybe a little bit of thunder and lightning maybe even some small hail but really nothing uh that's going to cause too much damage here would be uh for a sun uh, tomorrow morning we're dealing with uh early in the morning right around four 
four in the morning. Uh, we're dealing with some of those storms lining up for parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. We have a couple lines of rather robust storms, but those are even going to weaken as we head through the day on Sunday. So this is around 10 uh, in the morning Central Time, 11 uh, Eastern Time, and we're dealing with still just scattered rainfall for the most part. Maybe a little bit of thunder and lightning, but I really wouldn't play this up. I don't think this first batch of severe storms isn't it's I don't think it's going to be too major uh, or too intense for many areas here to be by later in the day so this is around 4 p.m uh central time 5 p.m eastern time maybe still a little bit of convective activity back through southern mississippi and southern louisiana uh, mainly just steady rain further to the north uh but again not looking like it's going to be too big of a threat especially uh j just the one that's happening on sunday and early on monday uh, but i think probably the one that's going to happen late on monday into early on wednesday morning uh is going to be the one that has more Im implications and is going to be more impactful so you can see that by uh sunday really late so right around 11 o'clock at night we're dealing with some of that uh eastern time 11 o'clock at night eastern time we're still dealing with some of that rain back through alabama and mississippi this would be again 10 p.m central time uh and other than that you get a little bit of a line of storms to develop uh but that even as that passes through georgia it really weakens uh quite a lot as you can see on this next frame so let's start talking about your next part of this severe weather event which is going to be up through the tennessee valley so these are the areas that's going to be most affected you can even see a uh, sort of what happened to that line of storms this is what was that line of storms and you can see it just headed further to the east and really dissipated uh with not too much uh not too much uh, energy or intensity uh, for many areas this is going to be a little bit more major and that's because we have high cape values high dew points high temperatures uh and high humidity va uh, values uh all uh confining over one area and again i think if you were to find any area that was going to have an enhanced risk it would be uh probably through here so this is uh, probably where the highest cape values are, where the highest dew points are, the highest temperatures as well. So uh, the highest of every uh, uh, severe weather aspect that you want to look at is converging over the same area. So if they, again, if they were to put a, a slight or uh, an enhanced risk out, I think it would be for this area. You can see that line of storms developing along the Ohio River. And this would be uh, early on Tuesday morning, uh, and then as we head later into the morning hours, so this is around 7 or 8 o'clock Central Time uh, on Tuesday, we're dealing with those line of storms pretty much over the same exact area. So we might be dealing with some localized flooding issues, especially not too good that it's setting up right along the Ohio and Mississippi River valleys, kind of where they uh, convene right here. That could cause some issues because we're dealing with most of the rainfall over a major river that is prone to flooding. So not the best of scenarios uh, right here. We're going to hope that we don't get too much rainfall out of this. You can see that by this next frame. This is by Tuesday later uh, in the morning hour. So this is around 10 or 11 in the morning central time and we're dealing with more just steady rainfall into the tennessee valley in the southeast now i will warn you we're using the lower resolution nam model because this is a little bit further out so it's not going to have the same uh high resolution uh, on map it's not going to look as intense on this map uh but when we get the nam 3k model usually it looks a lot more uh realistic in, uh, compared to what we would actually see so when we do get within that 60 hour time frame that the nam the nam 3k model is actually in render distance uh, then we can actually get a much better picture the nam 12k model is not going to do the best at presenting what the radar might look like uh, we're going to really want to see and wait uh, for what the nam 3k model is going to show because it shows it much much better and you'll actually see the true intensity of these storms so you can see potentially some thunderstorm activity into tennessee alabama mississippi georgia by this point we still see that first line of storms up into kentucky and tennessee and then if we head this forward a little bit more, this is by Tuesday, uh, right around 4 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, when, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and this would be around 3 p.m. Uh, Central Time, and we're dealing with that line of storms still into the southeast and the Tennessee Valley. This is still Tuesday night, uh, and then continuing this forward a little bit more, we do see a little bit more convection start to pop up uh, later in the evening, so around 4, 5, 6, 7 o'clock, that's when it's really going to start to ramp up over these areas, and then you can see potentially a few strong 
longer lines of storms developing. Uh, you can see storms moving from West Virginia all the way down to Louisiana. So a fairly widespread and large uh, area of storms. And again, it doesn't look too impressive on this model, but that's because it's such a low resolution uh, model. Definitely does not have the same resolution uh, or really uh, it's not as detailed as with the NAM 3KM model uh, would show. So once we get that model, I think it'll really kind of press in how major uh, this scenario and the storm system uh, could actually be. Now, let's start talk, uh, taking a look at some of the factors in this and that's uh, and we had to cut off the model one just because it doesn't go out as far uh, to fully complete out the event but you can see that we have temperatures that in parts of the Tennessee Valley are going to get above 80 so you can see 80 81 82 printed over much of Kentucky Arkansas Louisiana uh, Louis, uh, or Missouri uh, Tennessee all those areas have uh, 80 plus degree temperatures even if you're in the upper 70s that's still well above what you would need we have those 80s also along the southeast and the mid-atlantic uh, where we have 80 plus degree temperatures on tuesday and if we look for wednesday uh still warm especially over the southeast which is going to be the area that's going to be affected by the storms on wednesday you're all above the 75 degree mark uh, and even some areas getting closer to 80 degrees so well above what you would typically need to get a severe weather event here would be the dew points and this is on late uh, Monday, and you can see dew points in the Tennessee Valley, uh, even approaching 70, but most areas are around 65 or above uh, 65. So that's well above the, what you would typically need. And if we look at for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, uh, pretty much the entire areas of, from the Ohio Valley south and eastward have dew points that are above 60. For the, pretty much the entire eastern United States, uh, we have dew points above 60. So dew points and temperatures not going to be uh, an issue here. Uh, with this event. If we look at the Cape Valley's also, uh, they're going to be in abundance over these areas. So, especially again, that area that I circled off for Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, this area is where we have the highest uh, highest Cape Valleys. We also are going to be seeing the temperatures that are going to be uh, close to 80 degrees in these areas, and the dew points uh, might even approach 68, 69, 70 uh, degrees. So, really, really uh, a prime environment for some of these storms to develop. And again, look at these Cape Valleys over some of these areas in Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, uh, Kentucky, where we have dew point or uh, Cape values that are going to be 3,000 to 4,000 uh, in these areas. So that's very, very high. Uh, and really, it's well above what you would need to get a thunderstorm to develop. And here's for Tuesday. And you can see that we have Cape values that are also going to be a uh, well up uh, into the uh, into the uh, thousands, even up to 2,000, 3,000 in some of these areas. So really, really a prime uh, atmosphere to be getting some of these storms and if you're wor worried about the flooding risks we're looking at uh, along some of these major rivers the Ohio River we're looking at probably just about an inch for these areas uh, even up to two inches and then along the Mississippi River especially if you live east of there that's where we're looking at uh, maybe two to three inches even a few pockets in Tennessee uh, uh, Alabama and Georgia that are getting closer to four five even six inches of rainfall in some localized areas so we're gonna have to watch out for that uh, if you live in the southeast uh, uh, or the coastal southeast or even into the Carolinas and Virginia looks very nice So if you live in this kind of cutout right here uh, Which would go from the mid-atlantic down into areas like South Carolina coastal Georgia and Florida it looks good for you guys You guys aren't going to be dealing with much of this rainfall uh, Maybe just a quarter of an inch, uh, but it's as you get west of there into the southeast and parts of the Tennessee Valley That's when you're going to really start to get into more of that uh, heavy rainfall and accumulating rainfall so and that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.